Hi guys, sorted me hair out. Oh, right, there we go. Lockdown hair, eh? <laughs> Loving it. Oh, bouncy. That is very bouncy today, isn't it? That's going to be no good. Let me just tighten this up on it. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. That's how you tie it. Remember, always remember to tie it. That bit better. Yeah. So we are making collots today. Hello. We're making collots, and I have made up mine here. Um, I thought it makes much more sense for me to. Um, um, to have them here on a hanger rather than wear them. But I'm going to try and get a photo of me in them afterwards so that um, you can see them in all their glory. But I absolutely love them in this fabric. Um, let's see if I can pick it up there. Yeah, perfect. So this is the yeah, first part. We're going to do this today and tomorrow. Um, and you'll see that I'm wearing my pussy bow blouse. I finally finished it, although it's cold today. So I'm going to... Um, uh, I'm going to have to wear my cardi with it. Anyway, um, Alex is here from Sew Over It team to answer all of your questions whilst I'm sewing. And um, uh, buh, 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 buh. the pattern, <laughs> the pattern for the Ultimate Collots is a PDF only pattern. So you can download that from, um, purchase it from our site and download it. And we also um, um, we have a copy shop printing service for the UK only at the moment. So if you want to get it printed onto big scale paper, you can get that with us or you can get it just and then print it at home and stick it together. So, um, that's the ultimate clothes. Um, and also we are doing all of our sew alongs uh, for um, free because we want everyone to have, um, uh, be able to have a go and access them but we have set up a donations page. So if you do feel like you can donate, then the link will be coming up shortly. And if you're watching this after the live, it will be in the description box. Um, so everything that has been donated to date has really massively helped us as a small company. And uh, at the end of the first month, I think it was April, we managed to pay one of the team's salary from those donations. So thank you so, so much. Um, and it makes it possible and it means that we can carry on doing it. So, uh, I am going to today make the facing version. So there's two versions of the Ultimate Clots. There's the version with the waistband and belt loop so that you can wear a belt with it. Or there's a version with the, uh, like this version with the facing. So let's have a look at it in detail. So there's the facing in there. I've hand caught it to all the points with darts and seams so that it finishes nicely and sits inside. You can see there we've got some uh, nice under stitching along the top there. Um, there. There are small darts at the front because we don't need as much shaping there. And then at the back there are two darts which is quite common in trousers. So certainly I need that because I have that a big difference from hip to waist. So that means um, that that gives me that shaping. But the darts are something that you can take away or add more into to add the get that fit. Now these are loose fitting, so it's a good kind of trouser to make if you are new to trousers. So you, we always say our ultimate trousers, and or if not our collots are really good for beginners, um, who are not beginner beginners, but people who are making trousers for the first time beginners. Um, so yeah, and I've made these in a twill. Um, it is a twill rayon. This fabric I got from India the first time I went fabric shopping in India, which was absolutely amazing. Um, and I have been saving this fabric because I've been too scared to use it. You know what it's like in your stash. You've got certain fabrics you're like, I just can't use it. I just like it too much. And I feel like this, this lockdown period has been very much like, I have to use it. I've got to use all my stuff. And it's felt very satisfying working through it. So in terms of fabrics that you want to make these out of, I would recommend a uh, viscose twill is fine or a viscose linen blend, but normal viscose will be too lightweight. So the kind of viscose that I'm wearing, um, my pussy bow blouse, this will be too fine. The best thing really is crepe. So I'm making my version with you guys out of uh, the wildflower crepe that I have in the four colors. So this is perfect um, because it's not gonna crease, it's gonna hang perfectly. Um, it's still gonna, oops. It's 
still going to be billowy um, and have that kind of drape to it, um, which you need for culottes. So crepe is a really good fabric to use. You definitely need something with drape though. You can't make it out of something uh, like cotton. They just That just wouldn't work. And you definitely can't make it out of jersey. So I hope that helps with some indication on what fabric to use. So what I'm hoping we'll be able to do today is sew up the darts um, and prep the seams and maybe get some of the seams sewn. And then um, tomorrow we'll put in the zip and the facing. So I have got um, everything cut out and I think I've even done my notches, which is not unusual for me, is it? So I'm just gonna take my pattern off. Um, so it is a bit of a, a diff takes a lot of fabric, um, this pattern, because they're so wide. And now I didn't wanna take my fabric off the, um, sorry, my pattern off these pieces because I have turned them into palazzo. Oh, there goes Bob, just a second. Bobby, Bob, Bob. All right, all right. Okay, so I've turned them into palazzo by making them longer. You can see I've added that extra length on the bottom and I've also brought them in narrower. So you can see I've done it in a really uh, official way of just folding it in. So I've folded it in from about, yeah, those points so that it didn't get too wide. So I sort of changed the trajectory of that line. Um, so I brought it in there. Um, I think that's about an inch um, and that's just a bit more than an inch there. And that's just allowed it so that it doesn't get too, too big at the bottom. Um, and what I did is I added, I measured my inside leg and then I went from the inside leg of here um, down. Um, and actually this is quite a low crotch. So I know that I'll definitely have a good amount of length and then obviously adding your hem on as well. So and this is the other piece, this is the back. I had to take more off the back because they're very wide at the back. So I really did fold in quite a considerable amount on both sides. Can't really see it there, but yeah. So I can take those. Oh no, I can't take them off because I've got to mark the dots. So another thing I just wanted to point out is the crotch, I just said the crotch is quite low on these. So if you, I'm quite long from here to like here, that kind of measurement on me is quite long. So I, even with me, I do find the crotch quite low. So what I do, did, I don't kind of change any length in here because I need that length. But what I do is I just add on a little bit here so the crotch sits a bit higher. Okay, so I've done that on both front and, and back seat crotch seams. Right, so I'm gonna now mark the darts. Marky, marky, darty, darty. So if you're um, new to uh, sewing, dressmaking, how you mark a dart is you uh, make a little hole in the circle that's on the bottom of the dart. And we've got them indicated in terms of size on this pattern. And then you get some tailor's chalk and you mark through that circle. And then you put a pin in like that. And we then mark that. Okay, then you need to make sure you've notched those as well. So this is why we cut out right sides together so that when we're marking, we're marking through on the wrong side. So that's that one done. Make sure you cut all your notches. Just a little snip is fine. You don't need to be cutting that full triangle out. There we go. Can go down. And then we get the next one. And do the same, mark that dart. Check your notches. pin through so that we see where the point goes through on the other side and then mark with the chalk there okay and that can come out so guys I've had a very very day today hi so yesterday I've been working very long days yesterday I didn't finish I think two nights in a row I've worked about half ten 
I took, I, I kind of got to a point about half seven um, and I just thought, okay, I'm going to now go watch some TV and do all my hand sewing. So I did that um, and I cut these out. Um, so I had a lot of sewing yesterday because I sewed those up and I also sewed up the new sample for the PDF club. Um, and then <laughs> nothing like last minute. And then this morning I um, had my normal tea meeting um, and then I had to do a photo shoot with my dad for the newest pattern um, and uh, I um, yeah, first shoot with dad for the newest pattern and then I which was like hilarious we did some shots outside because the ones inside it's really hard to get the lighting right but it's looking gorgeous and one of the samples that I'm um, the one that I made actually the fabric is just perfect for it I'm really really happy um, so yeah, so photograph that. So the team are now uh, getting that into the front cover and ready for tomorrow's release. And then, um, then I did a bit more sewing um, and then a bit more prep for this. And then I did orders. And I'm gonna go back to doing orders. So yeah, very varied day today. Okay, so now guys, we are going to mark the rest of the darts with a, a ruler. Um, and so what I'm gonna do, I, I don't think you can see but I am putting the top of my, oh no. Someone didn't march, march, march. Someone didn't uh, mark the top of her dart on this one. Silly, silly, silly. I didn't cut in my notches. I hope I cut my notches on the rest of it though. Yeah. I'm gonna sneeze, I can feel it guys, sorry. Ooh. Sorry, stupid sneezer I am. <laughs> Sometimes it sounds like a mouse when I sneeze. <sighs> Thank you. Um, so, now from the notch to the point of the dart, we're going to draw a nice line. Down there. And then the same from the other notch down. So we're getting that nice triangle shape. I'll just show you. Okay. Thank you guys for all the bless yous. I think it's getting, I'm a bit more sneezy. It's definitely hay fever is coming, isn't it? Ooh okay, and then... those two done let's move on so we've got four to mark on here because we've got two on each piece on the back um, uh, did I not cut those notches either oh for lord's sake I thought I'd done it I thought I checked it I think because I used the same pattern to uh, make my last pair the snips in the notches were there, and so I was deceived in thinking that they'd been cut in here, but I'd obviously forgotten to do them at the top here. Someone asking where my card is from. Did I see that just then? It is from Cezanne, which is spelled S-E-Z-A-N-E, -E. and I do believe they are, they're online in the US, but they're a French company, and they deliver um to the uk i don't know where else in europe they deliver obviously france but they are definitely my favorite shop of all time they're an anthropology but for knitwear i just love it and they just bring out something similar to this every year and i usually each year buy a couple of colors i've got about five or six of them but i just think they're so pretty and they really wash well and they last well um and they're warm so in the summer, I wear more the Lisa Comfort Cardies, but in spring, autumn, winter, I wear these a lot. But yeah, you go on their site and everything's always sold out. <laughs> so you know, you have to be on their mailing list because then you find out about when things are coming out. Um, and then you don't miss it. 
And they also restock every Sunday night, it seems, but not necessarily all the things, but they have a restock on Sunday evenings. So I always have a look to see. But yeah, I've been, obviously, I've not bought, I only bought a couple of things this winter. So in the summer, they've got gorgeous dresses and things, but as I've mentioned before, I have a rule. If I can sew it, I don't buy it because I'm making so many clothes. So the only thing is occasionally, if a fabric is just stunning and I know I can't, you know, I've fallen in love with the fabric, I might buy something. Or I might buy something because I want to see if I can make a pattern from it or an element of a pattern from it. But yeah, I generally don't buy things like that. Just knitwear, jeans and shoes. I don't know why I'm telling you about my shopping habits. <laughs> oh dear. Mm -hmm. So very exciting last night, guys, house update. Um, so the guys that are doing my house, I think I've said before, it's basically um, a dad and a um, his son or son and his dad who are doing it and they live together anyway so they're um they're they were allowed to you know work because there was a sense they could go to work because the house was empty and they worked in the same household so um i was very lucky that um that was the case otherwise i don't think i would have been able to get the work done on the house so i'm just saying that I'm doing now guys i'm lining up right sides together lining up the top notches there I've got the point of the pin, uh, the dart there marked um, with a pin right on the edge of the fold there. And then I'm gonna put my pin in into one side of the dart and make sure that it's coming out on the, the line that we've just drawn on the other side. So let's just pin all our darts and I can waffle on about my house whilst we're doing that. So um, yes, and uh, anyway, it's obviously been frustrating because you, you know a lot of things could be delivered online, but you know, not not worth a thing um and uh for the bathroom the underfloor heating has been the biggest problem um and it kept getting um lost in delivery or then they didn't actually have it in stock and then they finally sent it and it was the wrong dimensions anyway he uh, there is actually a video that's gone up about my house yesterday if you're interested to see it it's on the lisa comfort home instagram it was a tour that I did last Friday when I was down checking on things. And um, they, oops, he basically, um, so yes, he was like, look, I'm going to try my best, but I still haven't got this um, here, the, 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 the underfloor heating, and I can't do anything until I've got it because I can't put the tiles down, etc., etc. So um, it was looking like, yeah, I, as I was saying, it was looking like I might not have yesterday. We were talking about it, weren't we? I was looking like it was not. We were not going to um, be able to move in because obviously without a toilet, that wouldn't be possible. Anyway, last night he sent me a photo, um, just a photo of like him laying the underfloor heating. He didn't even say, "I've got it. It's arrived. It's the right size." He just sent this photo, and I was just like, "Oh my gosh!" Like shouting out to mum and dad. I'm like, "The underfloor heating." Not because I'm so excited about underfloor heating, but just what that meant. So I think now there's every chance it won't be finished, but it should be absolutely fine. They should be able to get um, you know, toilet and bath fitted at least so I can move in. Um, and yeah, and all the stuff is coming back from the sprayers for the kitchen. So yeah, it's all going to be coming together. It's made me very happy. Hmm. <clears throat> right, front, fronty, front, front. Mm -hmm. So we've just got one dart in the front. Now, if you are making these for the first time, you might want to be making them out of a fabric you're not too fond of. Or you might want to make a toile to check the fit because you know fitting trousers even if they're collots and relatively loose it's always a challenge 
and not even me gets trouser perfect straight away. You have to fit it. So um, you might need to take something out or take something in. And if you're not sure about how to fit trousers, then I thoroughly recommend our um, how to sew and fit trousers um, course. We've got two of them on our uh, Stitch School, which you can buy just access to those classes if you want them, the classic courses, or you can, so you can just purchase, say, the first one, the ultimate guide, or you could, um, oops, or you could um, just sign up for a membership and we've still got it as a minimum, no minimum sign up, so you can sign up for just a month and it's 15 pounds and you get access to all of the classic courses so you can get access to both of them and on that course there is a lot more information about fitting because that's just a whole whole other ball game that I can't get into right now okay so I have pinned all of these so off we go with our uh, sewing of darts now just to recap when you sew a dart you reverse at the beginning but you don't reverse at the point because you want it to be a really smooth point um, and if you do a reverse, it might not be like that. So do a little reverse at the beginning and I'm following the pen, the chalk line that I drew and I'm using the groove in the middle of my presser foot to follow that line. When I come to the edge, I come off. So I sort of almost stitch off the edge where the point of the dart is and I take the two threads and then I turn tie in a knot and I always use my technique where I tie a knot and then I put the pin or needle into it and then I tighten it and push the pin down and that way you get the knot nice and close and then cut about leaving a centimetre. So that's one done. I'll cut my bits off the end there as well. Put that to one side. Okay, next one. I really think I might need to get my glasses. My eyes are so tired. And also today, I forgot I'm doing a sew along. Um, yeah, so they were like, oh, you look very tired, Lisa. So I had a coffee about mid-morning today. Which you know, I don't ever have coffee. But did help, did help me wake up. Mm-mm. No, that didn't work, did it? <laughs> Let's try my knot again. That's it. And then took those off. That's that one done. I do like sewing darts. I find them very, um, very satisfying. Yeah, that is satisfying. two done on one back piece so if your ratio if you have um curvy shapely one would say bottom like mine um then you will definitely most likely need these darts you may need to shorten them or you may need to lengthen them but you imagine you will need them and if you have uh, more of a flat bottom then you might find that you don't need to it also depends on the ratio between your waist and your hip, because these are meant to sit on the waist. They're high-waisted, like most of the things we do. Um, so then you need to think about that difference between your hip and waist. So I'm actually sewing a size um, eight in these, and as um, I've mentioned before, I'm normally a size 10 on the bottom. However, because they are quite loose, 
um, and, and baggy around the hip. So in order to get that that drape and the width for later on, they they do come out quite a lot on the bottom. So an um, an eight is more my waist, so that works perfectly with me. But just the thought that you might find that you end up if um, if you do have sort of slightly bigger hips to your waist ratio, then you might find that you can um, stick to the size that your waist is. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> So I didn't get a chance to watch Miss Fisher yesterday. I had wanted to, but in fact I was had to watch what Mum and Dad wanted to watch. Um, so we were watching. Oh gosh, what was it? Um, Jack Ryan, Shadow Recruit. Um, this is actually quite entertaining. wasn't the best of films. Um, but yeah, this afternoon I've got to. Um, I'm not, yeah, I was, so, I thought I was going to watch it yesterday, but actually I thought, you know what, I'm having to sew and I have to concentrate quite a lot on the sewing, so I didn't want to watch something that I was um, potentially going to get really into. But later on today, I'll be wrapping orders. I thought, oh, I could start watching it then. And then tonight I've got to make up some patterns. So you know these pattern folders that we have, they come flat. And then we have to put tape on them and fold them into the shape and then slot all the elements in. We looked at once at the guys who print them for us, at them doing that for us. But one, it makes them harder to um, store and two, it was really expensive. So we do it ourselves and obviously at the moment there isn't anyone. I've got them all here, so I'm doing it. So, but anyway, it's quite a nice TV watching project. So that's going to be my night tonight. And I thought, oh yeah, I can watch Miss Fisher. To do that. I very rarely at the moment just watch TV and not do anything else. Ah, it's not good really, is it? I've also stopped running because I've been doing all of my um, orders on my knees and I started to run, was it last week or the week before? And on my knee, just about after a couple of miles, it was really hurting. I was like, no, I'm not getting a knee injury. Anyway, it turns out it was because I'd been kneeling down for so long on hard floor. So now I try not to do that. Um, but uh, yeah, so I haven't even been running. And I've really started to feel a bit sluggish as a result. So looking forward to getting back into running. And in uh, London, in Walthamstow where I live, there's a place called Epping Forest, which is on the border of kind of that part of London. It kind of wraps around North East London and it's massive. Um, and it's about less than 10 minute walk. That's why I'll walk Poppy. So I'm really looking forward to going running there. Nice place to run. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're exactly. My dad did take the photos, so yeah, he's earned that. Um, he's earned that, and he, although also dad, he's asked me if I'll cut his hair today, so before I go, because mum was like, look Lisa, it looks like it won't be till July until your dad will get his hair cut by what the government was saying yesterday and the day before. So she's like, please, can you cut it? So like, okay, just making scissors ready. Come on, Dad. <laughs> I've cut Mum's fringe actually already and that was, and the little bits at the bottom um, and that was a, um, a success. So I'm ironing without telling you what I'm doing. Um, so I am ironing these darts now. Darts go towards the back. So, um, if you're, you've got the front piece, then they are going this way, okay, towards the side seams. Mm -hmm. mm. um, and this is, yeah, so they got to, yeah, they always go towards the side seams and when um, they're on the back, they go towards the crotch seam. So Alex um, had been, had, I'd managed Alex to quickly see your email with some ideas of what's going to be coming up in the kind of beginnerish session next. So next week we've got it, but the week after we haven't put anything in yet. And I have been getting quite a few requests for vintage headscarves. So I thought I would do that um, for them, that the 2 p.m. slot. Um, and all, Alex came up with a great idea of doing badges for the children's um 
slot, the kids sewing slot, a little felt badges with sort of safety pins on them, but a bit like you get for scouts or brownies where you basically, that we could, we, that you could kind of make them into sort of great things that you've learned to do in lockdown. So Alex had pointed out banana bread because apparently Alex has learned to make banana bread so she could have a banana bread one. But obviously for children, the things that they've learned on in lockdown, if they have like learned to do something that they haven't done already. Um, so yeah, like, uh, or like amazing bed maker. <laughs> Oh, um, yeah, maybe somebody's improved one of their, their kind of catching and throwing skills. I don't know. I'm trying to think what children have been doing. I mean, for Jasmine, I think nature lover. I'd have to make her one because since she was up here, she's learned so much about nature. Um, so, um, yeah. She would be a nature lover. She learns, she was like, she knows about how the... Uh, the bees go and get their juice. They get their juice from uh, from the uh, from the flowers. And I said, "Oh, do you know what juice it is?" She's like, "Yeah, no, it's not mummy juice. And mummy juice is wine." That happened uh, really embarrassingly about a year ago when we were going into a supermarket, um, and uh, Jasmine had only just she called beer daddy juice before. I think that's where it had come from. And then and then and I was like, "Oh, and this is mummy's juice." as a joke but of course you can't really joke to toddler they then take it seriously and we were in in the supermarket and there was a whole aisle of wine and she sat, shouted really loud look mummy mummy juice I was like, oh my gosh so embarrassing anyway so she's like not mummy juice and not not jazzy juice which is basically orange juice so no it's bee juice <laughs> honey it will make honey right guys those darts are all done that's how they look from this side um, the ones at the back, they've been pressed towards the crotch seam this way. Um, and, um, and now we've got to do a lot of prepping of seams. So like we did with the ultimate trousers, we need to overlock the outside seams, the inside seams, and also the crotch seams. Okay. So I shall just slide this one out the way. I think it's all right. I'm just checking for <coughs> whether it needs to be stabilized a bit more, but this is pretty stable this table I'm gonna get my glasses on as well guys I think I'm sorry I'm gonna have to get them on I'm getting eye ache okay um where have I put them sorry here we are la la time my hair as well it needs a bit of a wash i had to put some dry shampoo on but you know dry shampoo it's great at the beginning of the kind of day and then by about now it starts to not really do its job mm -hmm. Let's use these to clean there we go mm. right ready that is so much better I don't know what my prescription is, but basically, um, I, uh, like my eyes work too hard to see. So they get, I get, um, kind of headaches and eye aches if I don't wear them enough. I don't know what that kind of prescription is called, but yeah. Right. Okay. Off we go then. I'm using three threads at the moment because I had it on that for the scrubs that I was sewing and I haven't really changed it since, but I'm actually enjoying doing the three um threads so i think it's fine we're there we're there why are we not moving there we go off we go off we go oh also look so because of the photo shoot i did my nails last night but i did them at, i don't know about half 10 I completely forgot that thumb so i was like making it's like dad can you see my thumb when we're doing the photo shoot so you can't photograph that thumb suddenly thoughts are in my brain's flitting just be careful when you're doing this that you're not taking off any of the seam allowance because we're not yet um we've not yet sewn anything so yeah the leafy fabric leafy tropics i think i caught that i found um that but we've got that we're selling i don't know if we've still got some but hopefully we'll get more if we haven't um but how cool is that for a face mask 
Um, so I was like, Dad chose this one because now he's the now famous gardener of Instagram. He's like, oh, I want that one. So I sort of overly overcommitted and said that I was going to make them a couple and also my sister and her family and also Matt and Jasmine. I said I'd make them, although I don't think Jasmine will wear one. But I was like, yeah, no, it's fine. I'll make loads of them. And then actually last night I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to take ages to make all of these. But before I go, I want to make sure I've made some for mum and dad. We're getting a little bit of so quake. A little bit of so quake sal um and there Sorry guys, this is really boring. I need to talk whilst I'm doing this, otherwise it'll all be like watching me overlock. It's like watching paint dry. Ooh. Oh, someone's just drawing the PDF look, right? of anything to say this is like the first time i'm like oh, oh this is just two on the so quick <laughs> my brain is actually stopped guys i can't think of anything to say i guess that shows how tired i am i was thinking about what i'm going to wear with these actually and also these um and i've got this lovely cream um cream t-shirt that I could wear with those I think would be really pretty and it's got this like lace detail on it in fact I had it on in the video um that I did showed everyone my house tour I've kind of thought that would be work really well with it so I'm pleased about that but any white t-shirt I think would look nice I've also got a lovely little embroidery on Glaze one um so I've got that and I thought that even you know with that cardi maybe hmm. but yeah so I haven't tried it on with anything yet um and these though um oh guess where it's from maria Suzanne. not cheap as well but it washes well i wear it a lot looks great with jeans looks great with i thought it was a really good separate piece that um i could uh wear lot with lots of things and it follows my rule because i can't sew it because that lace detailing i can't recreate it was allowed. Um, but yes, uh, with these though, I thought black t-shirt, but also the, the, the pink, uh, blush pink cardigan. I think that would look really nice with this. Like a black um, silk cami. I was thinking, I don't have any silk camis. Or I thought to make this dressy, actually, I thought that how lovely would that be uh, with um, like a kind of uh, slipper satin in like a kind of champagne -y colour. That would make it like a quite a glam outfit. I just thought of Pauline asking about cardigans. Yes, I do want to do more cardigans. I want to do them in some jewel colours. So we've kind of done the, we did, the, you know, the burgundy and the green and we did the... Um, black and navy and we did obviously all the pastels but I really want to do one in like a really lovely magenta fuchsia colour and one in like a teal and I designed some different ones that were a bit more like this but maybe not as fluffy um but we just never got round to doing it and I think it was just like time that I was allocating to it but also finances we decided to focus more on the online stuff so I haven't done it but 
we are wanting to do them. So that's on my list to sort out. Red, yeah. We've got red ones already and I found a massive few, like quite a few big boxes. I know, redo. Redo what? I'm not sure what that is. But I found loads of um, new boxes of, um, of like in our storage unit of, of cardigans. So we've got lots of, of the existing ones. I'll get back on the line when I go back. But yeah, I really want to start getting some, some new ones in the mix. You know, I literally, I don't know how I cope in my wardrobe without them because of the t climate that we live in. I just need to have those in order to wear all the lovely dresses. All the lovely dresses. Um, we do need to expand the range. Those two have been done. Those ones have not. How are we doing for time? Okay. 20 minutes. So I think what we'll do is we'll get as far as we can together and then we'll finish maybe leg seams and things at home on our own. At home on our own. We're all home on our own. But you know what I mean. On our own. So that tomorrow we can focus on the zip and the facing. You don't have to see endless boring. Which iron do I use? This is Mum's iron. It's a hot point. I don't know what the version is, but it's a hot point iron. I've got a Phillips iron at home. They're good. done aren't we guys almost oh no kind of almost no not really yet okay well, this is the third one and then this is the last seam of the third leg so we're not far off still can't think of anything to say guys Tell you what, after lockdown, I was thinking about shoes. I didn't. I've got slightly healed. Um, oh, someone's wearing one of the face masks. What was that for you, Pauline? That's lovely. So the um, heel. No, oh, yeah, heels. Wearing heels after lockdown is going to be hard. So I've got some flat sandals and things, but I've not been wearing heels. Um, obviously, and I can't see me wearing them really, probably until July at the earliest. Maybe I should just be wearing them at home. So they say, they say that if you don't wear heels very often and then you suddenly wear them, you can really damage your back. And the best thing to do is to in, like wear heels sometimes and wear flats at the time. That's what I was doing. So yeah, I was just thinking these would be really nice with heels. Ah. Okay. Yeah, B cup. I can't look at this when I'm doing this. I'll probably cut my fingers, so I'm not going to look. Sorry.
Last scene, guys. Goodbye, Mr. Overlocker. Down you go. Oh. Uh. oh, gosh, engaging the core here, trying to do that. Oh, Corona core. It's <laughs> not very good core, is it? I don't want to talk about my stomach muscles, guys. Sorry, waffling there. Right, let's trim off uh, these threads. Da da da. Okay. Neaten it all up. Nice to do this as you go along. Okay. Let's do this one. And then I'm going to, I don't know if the instructions do it this way, but I'm going to sew the crotch seams next. Now, with trousers, you can either sew up your inside leg seams, sew up your um, outside leg seams, and then slot them in and do the crotch seam. Or you can do them the way that I'm going to do it. It really doesn't matter. It's just a preference. I just do it and mix it up sometimes. Just to change um, the way you construct them makes it a bit more interesting. Whoops, it is these. Yeah, you need to... Yeah, with trousers, I really think it's worth... I know it's a bit of a pain, but it's really good to um, overlock things separately. And also... It is um, good if you're fitting, because then, you know, you haven't, I mean, I think it's good if you're fitting, because then you kind of, um, I know you've kind of already overlocked them, but having the seams pressed together, in case you need to alter them at a later date, it's easier. Do, do, do. Right, so we need to get two, oopsie daisies, I forgot him. We need to get two pieces of the set. So we need to get two back seams. It doesn't matter if we start with the back or the front, but I picked up a back first, so that's what I'll do. That looks like a, that's the back, yep. Yeah. So we're gonna take the two backs and we're gonna place them right sides together. And like so. And I'm going to just pin it. I've got some, some notches to help us align it, but just pin it here and I'm pinning it there. And then I'm just going to fill in the pins. So pinning along that back crotch seam. So if you are petite, one thing you might want to think about is making these slightly narrower because they can look a bit too big if you're a petite person. Um, and I think that, so I'm five foot six, five, seven, five, six and a half. Um, and I think that that volume on me is about right. But if I was talking about it with my mum, she's about 5'4", and she was saying she might want them a little bit narrower. So that's just something you might want to think about in the fitting stage. Um, and certainly you can just whiz them in if you want to. Um, right, that is done. So let's stitch that. Now our seam allowance is 1.5 centimetres, of course, or 5 eighths of an inch. definitely get our crotch seam stitched and I think we could maybe get start to pin our inner or outer legs so that's that one 
Mm, that one. So tomorrow, like last, whoosh, like last week, I'll be doing my live chat on Instagram after the sewing bee. I think last week I was pretty tired and was quite ranty. <laughs> quite ranty about it. I didn't like last week, so I was really uninspired. So I'm, I'm hoping this week is better. I didn't really feel like there was that much to say about last week's. I think the children's is interesting, but it's never as exciting. Because I think we don't really have as strong views on children's clothes, do we? Right, fronts, right sides together. So yeah, here's a hoping it's a bit more inspiring this week. Can't remember what the theme was this week. They've done the holiday one. Does anyone remember what the theme is tomorrow night on the sewing bee? What to say? Sports, oh God. I'm really going to get excited about sports, aren't I? Still, no, I shall find excitement. Um, I mean, it's very hard to sew with sports um, fabrics. It'll be interesting to see if they get that athletic wear. Well, since we're all allowed in the UK to do unlimited exercise, <laughs> you can make unlimited amounts of sports wear. Right. I have pinned that now, guys. That's that. And I'm going to sew that with the same seam allowance. I guess it's important that they try and vary it, but I think for us, I think, you know, for TV watching, it's so much more fun if they had vintage, you know, if they had tea dress week and then they had like some sort of Downton Abbey 1930s. Um, it'll be on so over its Instagram. Um, and then, um, you know, I feel like that would be more interesting and then maybe prom night and then maybe um, kind of, work well you know i think that would just be i feel like we can all relate to that more and i don't think people care enough about children's clothes and sports things but that's my opinion Do -do -do. right so we're now we're going to press these seams open guys okay um It's quite tricky at the tip of the, um, the real acute curve of the uh, crotch seam to press it, but just try your best and try not to press in any creases. So use the point of the, the iron. Um, and if you've got a pressing ham, that will help. Even if it's kind of going up and the pressing ham goes round, it will just help you from stopping pressing it too flat. But yeah, angling the iron like that and just dipping it down. So you just use the point of it, you'll get a much better. Okay. Okay, and then the same. Ah. Okay, so that's those two done. So now we've got to basically make them into trousers so the front that's the back isn't it so it's easier if we just do the outside seams or the inside seams at first because then we can press those open nicely um i don't really i think when i did those i did the outside seams first but i think with you guys i'm going to do the inside leg because that means the lining up around the crotch seam um so slightly it's not fiddly but there's a way to do it so right sides together, and let's line up those crotch seams. So just to give you context of where we are in the trouser, oh no, it's there. So I'm gonna make sure that those crotch seams are sitting really nicely. And this is another nice reason why we it's good to have things pressed open because it means there's no extra bulk at that crotch seam, which is good because that can be uncomfortable, especially if it's close fitting. These aren't, but even so, it's nice if it's nice and flat there. So seam, make sure your seam is lining up with your seam. And then 
we will sew it from the crotch seam down. So from this side down, and then I would flip it and from this side down. So. If I pin it and then I'm gonna show you how you have to have the pins on one side for one side and the other for the other side. I've got notches as well to line up with, guys. I've not suddenly realised I've not been using them. Do you use your notches, your balance notches? I obviously didn't have them for where I extended it into palazzo pant length. So that's that side. So that on the machine will be from here and I'll sew down here and all the fabric will be off on the left. However, to do the other side, I need to flip it so that I'm pinning. So you see that's the side there, but I'm pinning now from this side so that when I do the other side, I do that. And you might say, well, why don't you just go all the way around in one continuous seam? Well, you might get a little bit of dragging and if you do, it'll be going down on one side and up on the other side. And it's much better if it's both evenly, especially if the fabric has any stretch in it. I mean, not that it should have stretch, but if it's got a bit more give, you don't want to, to be sewing each leg in a different direction. So if you um, get to this point, you're gonna sew this. I'm not gonna continue pinning because we're almost running out of time. And I've got a phone call stupidly arranged at two o'clock. So. I'm going to have to go. Um, but yeah, so if you sew that, press it open. And it's important to press it open then because once you do the next bit, it's going to be harder. So sew that, press them open, and then you can go and pin your outer leg seams. Now remember, on the left side, that's that side, on the left side, there'll be a zip and there's a notch marking where the zip is. And you need to sew up to two centimeters below that notch, okay? So if you sew below that notch, um, and then you'll be finishing that little gap once you put the zip in. So that side, and open, keep it open for the zip, and we're gonna go all the way down. On the other side, you can go right from the waistband down. And I would even, you know, just press it open as you go, because it's just a bit easier. I guess it doesn't really matter when you're doing the outer legs, but definitely make sure you press open the inside leg before you do this stage. Then you can try them on and, and just pin close where the um, seam allowance for the zip would be. Um, and yes, yeah, make your amendments for fitting. And then I will see you tomorrow for putting on the facings and putting in the zip. And I don't have any zip, so that'll be interesting. Thank you for joining me, guys. Um, I really enjoyed it. Thank you for bearing with me as I lost, lost kind of <laughs> waffle. Um, and was a bit tired today. I'm going to try and go to bed a bit earlier tonight. Have a lovely rest of your days. Thanks to Alex for answering all your questions and I'll see you tomorrow at one o'clock.